How's it going, everyone? Hope you guys have been doing well. Um, I just wanted to have a little talk about burnout as a software engineer and how I kind of get over burnout and how I try to like do different things so I'm not so like bored doing the same thing at work. So I know I had a video in the past kind of talking about burnout. Um, and if you notice, I haven't really been publishing that many YouTube videos. Uh, I, was, I was kind of publishing one every day for like the past couple of months. But honestly, just reached a point where I'm just like, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so when I reached that point of like burnout and I'm just like tired of doing it, what I typically do is I'll just try to find something else to kind of occupy my creativity and my mind. So I've been trying to work on a 2D multiplayer game, uh, which I think some of you have might have seen on my live streams. And I just kind of just keep on adding different things to this. So like right now I have it so it's kind of laggy. I added some way to basically fake some ping. And I'll kind of just walk you through what I've been doing. I I don't really have any clear goals for this video. I just want to kind of share with you of like what I'm working on and how this kind of helps me avoid burnout. So if I refresh these pages, the ping should be like something a little bit more realistic, like 23. Um, so what I have here is a 2D side scroller, which obviously it's still in the realm of like web development because I'm using web sockets to have players kind of move around and I'm using HTML5 canvas to render this stuff out. But it's a kind of in a different niche than normal like React for web development where you create a form, you validate the form, you send the data to the back end, the back end validates the data again, you add it to a database. And you can imagine doing that all day, eight hours a day for a full-time job, and then getting off of your job and making more content to explain React. It's just kind of like, I don't know, it just, you get burned out. Like you want, you don't want to touch React anymore. You don't want to touch web APIs anymore. You want to try something different. And so when I get to that point, which happens every every so often, right? I'm not like, it's hard to say super motivated for what you're doing. And uh, like, even if you're passionate about programming and passionate about coding, like you're going to reach points in your career where you're just like, dude, I can't do this anymore. I just can't imagine myself doing this for another 20 years or 25 years until I can retire. Um, and when that happens, when you start getting into that like negative mindset, I just like to try different things. Like maybe I'll look up AI. Maybe I'll look into learning more about computer vision. Maybe I'll make a game. I've always tried to make games in the past, and I think it's a good um, segue or a kind of good like reprieve from doing the typical React web development stuff because it's kind of exhausting. You learn something new in the web dev world. Someone releases a new version. You have to go and learn the new format of their API library, and then people hype up all these frameworks all the time with web development. And like, I just want to do my own thing and just learn something new. So with this game, I've been kind of trying to read various articles to understand like the concepts of multiplayer game programming. And honestly, a lot of the stuff is way over my head. I haven't tried making a game since like college. Uh, so it's been like 10 years or so. But I kind of remember reading over the concepts and kind of understanding like, what, what these things are. So what I'm trying to add to my game right now is client side prediction. So right now, if I press D, there is a slight delay in the responsiveness because what happens is a WebSocket event sends my command to the server, right? So it says, hey, server, I'm holding down D right now. And the server is only going to run at a certain tick rate, right? So like 30 times a second. And it processes whatever command I have held down, and then it moves my character. And I don't see my character move until the server sends me back my game state, right? So I can kind of simulate that with reducing my ticks. So if I go to the constants here, I should have a tick rate, which is set to 10. I'm going to go ahead and save that and refresh it um, from 30 to 10. And you'll notice it's a little bit more choppy. And then if I were to increase my ping as well from 25 to something that's like a little higher. Um, again, this is all locally. So I'm like simulating ping by just adding timeouts and stuff. So if I were to set my my overall ping to 100, it's just it just feels really choppy. I mean, it's still playable, but it's not really the best uh, user experience, right? And one thing I also added, I don't know if I have it on this branch, but if I go to my constants and I go to draw hitboxes and I make this true, you'll see that there's going to be a box of where the server thinks the player is. So this blue box is the actual true server state. In this case, it's always ahead of the player because I'm not doing any type of client side prediction. So what I've been trying to learn how to do is like the moment I press D, move the player, which will actually make the blue box be in the past, right? Because I'm going to predict on the client side where the player needs to be. And honestly, if you're a low ping and you have the tick rate of the server like 30 or 40, you don't have to worry about this stuff because it's going to be looking pretty fast and responsive. 
but these are things I'm trying to figure out and it's just a nice like change from the react stuff. So here's an example of some person who does the client side prediction reconciliation interpolation. So if you notice, if I turn all this stuff off and I have a really high ping, let me go ahead and turn this off. If I press the arrow, there's a huge delay. So I'm going to go ahead and say press and notice the delay there. What client side prediction allows you to do is the moment you press the arrow, it actually moves the player. Okay, so the player starts moving. But that's another thing that you have to figure out. There's another problem where you start getting these like game state updates of where your player actually is. And that's why you notice that my player keeps jumping back until it actually, uh, you know, correctly aligns or syncs up with the server state. So there's another concept of reconciliation where when you press the arrow, everything looks pretty smooth because all the client does is just verify like the actual events match up with the server you're not actually verifying in that point in time you kind of look back in the past and verify that like hey everything works good so i'm trying to like read through this code he has all this code in this um the sources tab here a lot of this is way too much for me honestly like i haven't i'm not good at game dev but i wanted to kind of dive into game dev just to kind of understand a little bit more of it and uh yeah, at some point I do I, I do want to say that all these sprites and animations um, and uh, images, these are all like open source free things, which I have in the description of my repo. So I'm not like, I didn't actually make any of these. I don't think I'm a great artist because I'm, I'm not. I did add the bats in the background. Um, I found a bat image and I added that cool little, you know, bat animation. I'm pretty proud of that. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of make, um, make a video since I have it in a couple days just to explain like what's going on. Um, and explain how, you know, when you get burnout, your choices are to just like take a vacation, just stop programming and do something else. Uh, and then at some point, like the motivation will come back, honestly. Like, oh, I also have teleport. If I click E here, it actually teleports me to a different place in the map, which I didn't show yet, which is interesting. Go here, press E, and I just fell. But yeah, I think it's just good to kind of share that like everyone gets burnout. Um, most people, like especially if you're working full time as an engineer, like there's days where you just don't want to program. There's days where you don't want to work on the project you're working on. And you just have to kind of do it because that's your job, right? But we're not always fully engaged and happy with what we're doing. And it kind of comes in cycles. So just that's normal, I would say. I'm sure most people feel this and I leave a comment below if you felt burnout as well in software engineering or just burnout in general. Like whenever you're trying to go ham on something, you just reach a point where you're like, I can't wake up and do this again. Um, but then you just need to convince yourself that this is just a phase. This will go away. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't know if I'll keep on making content about this game. I may might do that. Um, when I get the motivation to make more React content, I will probably, you know, publish some more React content. But that just... Just want to make a video for you all. So if you want to join my Discord and talk to me directly or kind of give feedback into what I'm working on, feel free to. The link's in the description of the video. And uh, like always, have a good day and happy coding.